class. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson. In this video, we're gonna explore what happens if we take a particular function and revolve it around a horizontal, in this case, the traditional x-axis. And we're gonna explore what would be the volume of that, of that shape that's formed when we revolve an area around a horizontal axis. So come with me to this problem here. The function I'm thinking about is f of x equals one over x. And let's think about this function on the interval from x equals one to five. So x equals one to five, here's the function one over x. And so in blue, I've shaded the area that we're gonna consider revolving around the horizontal or the x-axis. Now you have to really get this idea of a revolution, like, like a revolving door. We're not just like moving it, we're revolving the blue area around. And so I've done my best to create my, my best artistic rendition of what this would look like. So this blue stuff got revolved around the horizontal axis. The x-axis should cut it right down the middle. I know it's not perfect. So if you look at it sideways, it almost looks like a tree trunk. The top of the tree trunk here, the bottom of the tree trunk here, and a tree trunk on its side is what we're really thinking about here. And what I want us to examine and explore is, what would be the volume of this shape? Now, in good calculus fashion, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna split this tree trunk, if you will, up into infinitely many, infinitesimally thin slices. And in doing so, we'll have a particular shape and we can see the volume of that shape. And again, using good calculus technique, we'll sum up all of those volumes. Here's what I mean. Imagine if I was to slice this tree trunk just right here. What would that representative slice look like? Well, again, my best artistic rendition if I cut this up into infinitely many, infinitesimally thin pieces, each one of those pieces would look like that blue, really thin disc, that blue, really short cylinder. Now this is just one of infinitely many. There's gonna be many of those cylinders inside of this tree trunk. But let's just imagine that blue cylinder right there. The volume of a cylinder is found by taking pi times r squared. We pause there. Pi r squared should sound familiar to you. That's the area of the circular base of that cylinder. And we multiply that by the height of the cylinder. Now this cylinder has a height that's really, really short. It's infinitesimally short. And that height is really right there a really thin, a little change in x, a little delta x. And so the volume of that particular slice, let me say it this way, the volume of that slice could be found by taking pi times the radius squared and multiplying it by the height, which is just that little delta x. Now notice the radius is just this height right here. So at this particular input value of x, the output given by f of x equals one over x would give me the radius of that disc. Now, depending on which disc I was talking about, this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, the radius of that disc is gonna be for that input value, it's gonna output whatever one over x is. So the volume of any particular slice is gonna be found by taking pi times the radius. And the radius is going to be found by taking any input between 1 and 5, putting into the 1 over x function de to determine that radius height. That radius gets squared, and you multiply it by the height, that little infinitesimal dx. Now imagine we've done that infinitely many times. And we found the volume of all infinitely many of those blue disks. We sum them up. That's what calculus is for. We're gonna sum up the volume of all of those disks. Pi times one over x, the radius squared dx. And we're gonna do that just between one and five. And that'll give us the volume of that tree trunk looking thing. Let's do it. 
So to get the integral of this thing, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take that value of pi, that, that constant multiplier of pi, and just bring it out front as we are able to do. I'm gonna take one over x squared and rewrite it algebraically as one over x squared. I'm also gonna do a little bit of algebra and say pi times the integral from one to five. One over x squared is equivalent to saying x to the negative two power. So we just have a pretty basic integral to work on here. Let me go here and do that integral now. So what we have is pi times the integral of x to the minus two. Let's think through that. It's gonna be x to the, now, when you do an antiderivative, we'll increase that power to negative one. And then think about how derivatives work. The negative one comes out front and notice it's not there. So we need a negative out front to counteract that negative. Just to double check, negative one times a negative one will leave me with the positive pi. Decrease that power by one to get the negative two. We are all good. And then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll evaluate that from one to five. Okay, so the antiderivative gives us negative pi times x to the minus one. We'll evaluate that antiderivative from one to five, but I'm gonna do one more algebraic move first. x to the negative one is the same thing as saying one over x. So we'll have negative pi times one over x from one to five. Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll substitute in x equals five, minus, we'll substitute in x equals one. So we'll have negative pi times one fifth, minus negative pi times one over one. That is, we'll have negative one fifth pi, one fifth times pi negative, minus a minus or plus pi, negative one-fifth pi plus, you could think of this as five-fifths pi, one pi, negative one-fifth plus five-fifths would be four-fifths pi. So the volume of this tree trunk looking thing would be four-fifths pi cubic units. Now, we're gonna explore what happens if instead of going from one to five, we went from one to six, one to seven, one to eight, one to a million, one to a billion, one to infinity. Let's see what happens then. Now it's an interesting uh, phenomenon to explore this tree trunk situation for extending the interval instead of one to five. What if we went one to six, seven, eight, nine? What if we went one to infinity? What if we allowed this tree trunk to be infinitely long? and we were asked to find the volume of such an object. Let's see what happens. So from our previous work, we know that each of those infinitely many, infinitesimally thin disks, those blue disks in my drawing there, are, are really thin cylinders. We're calling them a slice with this volume of pi r squared times h. So again, we're going to sum up the volume of all of those slices but instead of going from just one to five, oops, we're gonna go from one to infinity. Do you think it will have a finite volume or do you think it'll have an infinite volume, this infinitely long tree trunk? Let's see. So here's how we like to explore these things. This is an improper integral, an integral that uh, we sum up things to infinity. Or it's, it's called an improper integral. And the way we express it is this. Instead of saying one to infinity, we're gonna say from one to say a. And we're gonna take the limit as a approaches infinity. That way we can use our limit from calc one to kind of make sense of this situation. Again, let's do some algebra here. One over x squared, one over x, the quantity squared is equivalent to just one over x squared. And again, we can, uh, we can have that constant multiplier of pi out front and think about just integrating one over x squared or x to the minus two from one to a. So let's, let's do it. So a is going to infinity. We're allowing that upper limit on our x interval to go not just to five, but to as big as we want. 
And as we integrate this thing, we will again get pi times. The integral of x to the minus two is negative x to the minus one. I'm just gonna put the negative out front. And we'll evaluate this integral from one to a, again, keeping in mind that a is gonna go off to infinity. Let's do a little bit of algebra here. Again, I just think it's more instructive if we allow this x to the negative one power to be written as one over x. All right, now by the fundamental theorem of calculus again, we will substitute an a in for x and think about a going to infinity, minus we'll substitute a one in for x. Let's see what happens. So first, substitute a in for x. We'll get negative pi times one over a. Keep in mind that a is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Minus, substitute a one in for x. So we'll get negative pi times one over one, which is one. Now, as a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, imagine one over 10, one over 100, one over a million, one over a billion, one over a trillion. As a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this term just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. This is like one one bazillionth, which is really, really small. So this term goes to zero, minus a minus or plus pi, pi cubic units. A crazy thing happens. If we have this infinitely long tree trunk, and we wanted to find the volume of it. It has a finite volume of pi cubic units. Now, this is actually a mathematical paradox or phenomenon that you could uh, look up and learn more about called Gabriel's horn. Imagine this not being a tree trunk, but being one of those big long trumpets that they sometimes uh, used to represent angels blowing on trumpets, these long trumpets, Gabriel's horn. And the volume of this infinitely long Gabriel's horn is a finite value of pi cubic units. Something to keep you up at night thinking about.